Ever since the results of the first big run were announced, there's been a divide between the player base, specifically between the more casual players and the overfishing community, who've had the blame pointed at them by casuals for the top 5% scores being hard to reach. However, during the most recent big run, the devs implemented a new system, in which the scores for each trophy were predetermined, and the goal threshold was set to war in 30 butt, a number lower than even the first big run. More serious Samurai players have been talking about how these numbers take the satisfaction of getting good scores away from them, because they can get 200 eggs, only to get the same reward as someone who got 135 eggs, which is a viewpoint that has been met with criticism from a greater portion of the Splatoon player base on Twitter. Today, I'm going to talk about how Big Run as an event currently is doomed to leave players unhappy with how the system works, and what both sides get wrong when it comes to the debate in my opinion. But first, I just want to thank you guys for blowing past my previous goal of 150 subs when I spot this video, so I'm now aiming to reach 200 before the end of the year. So if you enjoy this video, consider liking and subscribing. Now, let's talk about Big Run. I'm going to talk about the main arguments being presented by both sides, and give my own personal critiques of each side's argument. From the perspective of a Samurai player who has a peak EVP rating of 530, and has earned a gold ranking under both systems, during the Undertow Spillway and Burnicle and Dime Big Runs respectively. But I'd also say I can only dream of coming close to the abilities of the best of the best overfishers. Starting with the side of the casuals, their primary argument against the old system is that the thresholds for top 5%, especially as time went on, became more and more unreasonable and forced players to grind in order to reach them. A lot of the blame for these scores being so high, as I mentioned earlier, is placed towards the overfishing community, a group of Samurai players who are dedicated to maximizing the number of eggs they get in any one shift. I've also seen some players say that not knowing the amount of eggs they needed caused anxiety and pressured them to keep playing in order to get as high a score as possible. Overall, a lot of players on the side of the debate, to say in the nicest way, are not super dedicated Samurai players, and they may range from your low EVP enjoyer Samurai from time to time, to people who only play Samurai Run when Big Run is going on. When these players see the high score requirements, it can be really demotivating to those players, which may cause some of them to drop the mode altogether, as it seems a lot of these people have a big focus on getting scores that will rank them above the threshold required to get gold, rather than the other special incentives for Big Run. Now to shift towards dissecting this argument. Starting off with the easier part first, this side being happy that they no longer have to worry about if their score is good enough is great, and if there's something in the game that causes anxiety for people like this, then changing something to remove that feeling is a good change in my opinion. So that's one point for the new system. But now I have to shift towards the blame being thrown at overfishers. This is often the crooks of the argument from the more casual side as to why the previous system was bad, and I just can't help but heartily disagree with it. I think that the main thing that casuals have gone wrong when it comes to hating the old system is overestimating two things. One, the difficulty of reaching the gold scores, and two, the actual size of the overfishing community relative to the Splatoon 3 player base. So let me say this right here. You did not have to be an overfisher in order to get a gold trophy before the system changed. With tweets like this, it's hard to not look at the overfishers making top 5% too hard argument as just a form of deflecting blame. I apologize if I'm about to come out as harsh here towards casuals, because I'm about to feed some hard to swallow pills to that portion of the player base. Systems like these often confront players with the reality that they may not be as good as they think they are. There are two ways that someone can react to this information. Swallow the bitter pill, and either read just your goal to be more realistic in the short term, or put in the work to improve at something so that your long term goal becomes more realistic. The other way to react is to get defensive, not acknowledging that you may need to better yourself at whatever skill it is in order to reach the goal you set for yourself. These players will often be the ones to throw blame at other things for their failure to reach their goal. In this case, overfishers, their teammates, RNG, etc. These types of players can come off as having this sense of entitlement that they should be able to achieve something without working to get to the skill level required to achieve it. So now that I've angered a lot of the casual player base, let's talk about the size of the overfishing community relative to how many people play Big Run. Now these numbers may be slightly off, because I'm referring to numbers used in a video regarding the argument made by Hazmi, a former Samurai community figure that was made following the Undertow Big Run. But if we are to believe that those numbers are still somewhat accurate, overfishers only make up roughly 1-2% of the whole Big Run player base, and I'm willing to bet it's closer towards the 1% mark. This leaves a whole 4% open for everyone else to fight for the gold statues. So the argument that overfishers made it impossible to get gold in Big Run before the system change is just simply not true, and more often than not felt like it was just a way for casual players to protect their egos. Now I spent time bashing casual players, time for me to talk about the argument of the overfishers when it comes to their disdain for the new system. 
The main thing I've seen from the more serious side of Saruman players when it comes to the new system is having a common feeling of the new system taking away the sense of achievement. Since anyone can get a gold badge now, he makes theirs feel less meaningful. I've seen some sentiment that the threshold for this big run in particular, being only 1 in 35 eggs, ruined the event due to the ease of reaching the score. Players have said they reached the score in a few shifts and stopped playing because they didn't see the point in continuing. Ironically enough, I feel like this argument also stems from a group of players who put too much focus on just getting the gold trophy, much like the casual side I just talked about earlier. I think the main problem with this argument is this side's focus on the sense of achievement to me. Yeah, it may not have been as satisfying to get a gold on Barnacle and Dime, as opposed to, say, Undertow, but from my perspective, this change makes my Undertow top 5% feel even more like this great achievement for me because I was able to get the gold badge under the harder system, which I guess is just where I differ from players more serious about grinding high egg scores in this mode than myself. Besides, for the top 20% of players in the Barnacle and Dime big run, the Spotnet 3 app would show those players what percentile exactly they ranked in, so it shows to me that the developers still do want to at least acknowledge the more accomplished Saiyan run players, and in all honesty, I think it's a fair compromise. Overall, I do think that at times the order fishing community can be a bit too gatekeepy when it comes to discussing their system, and should be more accepting of the reality that Nintendo's vision is to make the gold trophies and badges easier to earn for more players, while appreciating the compromises that Nintendo has made to still acknowledge their efforts. Now I have talked about the arguments of both sides, all my personal problems with both arguments, it's now time for my personal stance. Based on the length of critiques for both sides of the coin, I don't think I need to tell you at this point that I personally preferred the older system, but there's a bit of a caveat to that opinion, so let me talk about it. In concept, I personally prefer the older system, but not for the same reason as I brought up with overfishers and saying that getting gold felt like more of an achievement back then. My personal reasoning was that in theory, the top 5% cutoff for gold would serve as a motivation for more players to want to improve at Samurai 1 so that they could put themselves into a position where achieving that goal would be realistic in the future, which would mean more people improve at Samurai in general, which equals higher quality teammates, which I think is a win for everybody involved. However, in practice, this didn't really come to fruition, because as I said earlier, a lot of the people, rather than working to better themselves, just threw blame at everyone other than themselves for not being able to reach the top 5%. Some of those people also brought up how they didn't want to play Big Run because of the system in place, and the anxiety not knowing if their score was good enough caused them. And so due to that, I think when it comes to what Nintendo wants, which is for more people to be playing during Big Run, I think they made the right call in changing the system to be like this. And when taking a look at some of the data, this may have had the effect I'd hoped the older system would have, as over 20% of the player base crossed that 135 mark, which I'd like to wager was a new personal best in Big Run for a significant portion of that group. Also, the would-be thresholds for bronze, silver, and gold for the Barnacle and Die Run once again went up, though that may also have something to do with some of the non-Splatoon fan slash lower skill players dropping the game over time. Back to Big Run rewards though, I think it's some small additional compensation for people who got top 5% before the system change. Maybe their gold Big Run badges could be slightly adjusted to symbol this. Maybe like some sparkles on the badge or something. I don't know. It's small and I think would give a small sense of achievement back to those players, without being much of a big deal since it's just a change to a badge. For me, though, the gold rewards pale in comparison to the other main reasons to play during Big Run. Now you may think this would be the end of the video, but I've had this thought for a while now, and I don't think there will be a better time to bring it up in a video, so here I go. I personally think that Big Run should be reworked into a mode that focuses more on community collaboration, rather than being a high score event, especially now that Egg Shore exists. We don't really need two competitive high score events for Sailor Run, do we? How would this work though? Well. It's a rough concept, but if you guys like it, I could maybe consider putting some thought into fleshing it out more in its own separate video in order to properly address a lot of the issues I mentioned same run players have with both big run systems. So anyway, the idea I have here is that the entire player base would grind to collect a predetermined amount of golden eggs in order to all get the same statue based on that number. Maybe something like 10 million for bronze, 12.5 million for silver, and 15 million for gold. Obviously these are just example numbers and Nintendo has a greater amount of data to make educated guess on what the actual fair thresholds would be for each tier of reward. I feel like this would really reinforce the idea of Big Run, which is that Spot School is under attack by the Salmonids, and we need to come together to defend ourselves, which is something that a competitive high score event really doesn't portray. I also think this would cause less risky play in general Big Run, as players might feel more inclined to say, get a consistent 70 to 80 eggs in a full shift and win, rather than try to push a wave in which they get 35 to 40 eggs, but get wiped in the last few seconds of the wave. In order to not leave players in the dark, I figured that we could at least at halftime get a total count of the amount of golden eggs the player race has collected so far, although ideally it'd be a minimum after every map rotation change. After the event ends, Deep Cut could come on the news and be like, 
Hey, the salmon has been driven out of insert map here, but they did do some damage during the big one. So insert map here will be closed while undergoes repairs, which leads perfectly into another idea I had. The salmon hits damaging part of the maps they invade could be used as a nice convenient war excuse for map reworks. The only problem that may exist here is that it may be a bit much to ask to have the dev team design a big one version of a map, along with reworking that map at the same time. But other than that, I feel like this concept does a good job at addressing the main problems players have with both big run systems, while reinforcing the idea that the entire player base needs to come together against the common threat, rather than being a choice throats afterwards. Although if we fail to get a gold as a player base, I could still very much see that happening. But anyways, that's all I have to say. Did you prefer the old big run system, or do you like the new one more? What are your thoughts on the idea of a more cooperative focused big run? Do you have any opinions regarding either system that I didn't mention here? Let me know your thoughts, maybe I'll want through your experience in ranking Samron, as I'm hoping to hear from players from all parts of the skill spectrum. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.